If you got shoulder pain, one thing you need to start thinking about is a biceps pulley sling. Keep watching this video to learn more. So a lot of people know that the biceps attaches to the top in front of their shoulder and they understand that the biceps tendon, the proximal tendon, can be one of the common causes of your shoulder pain. But did you know that it actually has a direct interaction with some of your rotator cuff muscles? In particular, it interacts with your supraspinous and subscapularis tendon in what we call the biceps pulley sling. But what is the biceps pulley sling? So let's dig deep into that right now. The biceps pulley sling is a tendonoligamentous structure that's found in the front of your shoulder. Basically, it means that your tendons and ligaments come together to stabilize the biceps tendon at the front of your shoulder. Some of the ligaments involved are your coracohumeral ligament and your superior glenohumeral ligament. Basically, these tendons and these ligaments come together to wrap around the biceps tendon so that they can hold it in place in order for you to mechanically function and move your shoulder. It's called a biceps pulley sling or a biceps reflection pulley basically because this structure is used to create a pulley system in the shoulder to give your biceps a mechanical advantage when it comes to shoulder movements. This is why sometimes you can feel your shoulder clicking along the front. This is your biceps tendon kind of moving along within what we call the bicipital groove. Part of the biceps reflection pulley is a transverse humeral ligament, which forms the roof of the bicipital groove and holds that biceps tendon in place. When the biceps reflection pulley is irritated and becomes unstable, it basically allows your biceps proximal tendon to snap back and forth within that bicipital groove, and that can eventually cause some shoulder pain. So in general, this issue that you might be getting along the front of your shoulder, the pain that generated from an irritated biceps pulley sling, fundamentally what this means is that this pain is actually due to instability of the shoulder. So one of the things that we want to start doing is start targeting and strengthening the muscles involved so that the shoulder can then stabilize and then you can actually move forward with other types of activities and that could be pain free. Now, if you're still with me at this point of the video, there's three muscles that I did mention that we want to target. And that's because they directly influence the biceps pulley sling. They are the long head of biceps, brachii, the subscapularis, and the supraspinous muscles. So today's video, we're going to do some exercises that target all three of these muscles in different ways so that we can teach your shoulder how to stabilize this tendon and reduce the amount of clicking that you get. But before we jump into those exercises, there are a few more things that we need to talk about with regards to managing this injury. First of all, because it affects both your tendons and your ligaments, the amount of time that it takes for this injury to improve is months. And that is with consistent exercising week to week for that rotator cuff and that biceps. Second, when you're doing these exercises, they actually shouldn't really hurt for you to do. And we wanna minimize how much clicking you actually experience during these movements. So there are a few things that you need to follow. One, the pain that you're experiencing shouldn't exceed more than a two out of 10 pain. That means, yes, you might feel some discomfort while you're doing these exercises. A bit of tension or a bit of stretch can be okay for you to experience, but as soon as it starts feeling very painful, you want to make sure that you want to stop that exercise and get a second opinion about what's going on. Three, if you do find that you do have some pain but only really starts to occur near the end ranges, then just shorten the range of motion so that it doesn't re-aggravate your symptoms. It's okay to start with partial repetitions while doing these exercises and increasing the range as your shoulder levels up. Four, you want to make sure that the exercises that you're doing today do not aggravate your symptoms beyond the duration of when you're actually doing the exercises. This means you don't want to feel some lingering soreness for more than two hours after you've done the exercises, or you don't want to feel some increased soreness first thing in the morning when you wake up tomorrow. If you do find that these exercises do increase the amount of pain that you experience the next day or over two hours later, then that means you did push the exercises a little too hard. You need to take a step back with regards to how intense or how much volume you're doing in terms of these exercises. Five, these exercises are not to be done every day. You got to give your muscles and tendons a break from doing these strengthening exercises. The best amount of times that you want to be doing this is about two to three times a week. Generally speaking, you'll be doing two or three sets depending on how much your shoulder can actually handle. Everyone's going to start at different levels. So someone who has a lot more pain won't be able to do as many sets. Versus someone that's been doing these exercises for a while might be able to do a full three sets with no problem. Generally speaking, in terms of number of repetitions that you'll be doing, you'll be doing anywhere between five repetitions to 15 repetitions. And again, this really just depends on how easy the exercise is for you to do. These exercises that we'll be doing today are going to take care of your shoulder basically within the first two to six weeks of your rehab program. This means that the exercises after a six week period might need to be adjusted or leveled up because they're going to be just too darn easy for your shoulder. And if you want to get full results, you got to do something a little bit more difficult, a little bit more catered and specific to you as an individual. To get something like that, it's really recommended for you to consult your local physiotherapist or sports chiropractor 
Project for a consult on how you could take your shoulder rehab program to the next level. And for those in the GTA, we actually have two locations in Toronto, one at North York and one in Markham. So if you're local to us, give us a call and we could book you in in order for you to get your shoulder fully assessed. All right, time for the good stuff. Let's get started. All right, so the first exercise that we'll be doing is called the banded internal rotation uppercut. And we're doing this exercise because it's going to target your subscapularis by giving it an internal rotation resistance. And we're going to target the biceps by keeping the arm in 90 degrees flexion. And it'll target your biceps and shoulder flexion. Lastly, the main benefit of this exercise is that it puts a constant tension through your tendons, which is what is needed in order for your tendons to adapt. So first thing you're going to do is take a monster band like this one. This is the lightest monster band that we have, which is rated between 15 to 25 pounds. And you're going to stabilize it by looping it around something solid like a squat rack or if you have a band anchor at home that could slide through the door frame use that instead from here we're just going to hold the band with our hand we're going to make sure our arm is bent to 90 degrees and we're going to stand perpendicular or 90 degrees to that band from there we're going to take a side step just so there's that there's enough tension in the band to give your arm some internal rotation resistance so normally this is complete slack i gotta rotate my hand into intro rotation in order for me to recruit that subscapularis muscle and therefore their tendon. From here, we're just going to slowly add a two to three second tempo, raise our elbow forwards until it is just about the height of our shoulder. So right here, my shoulder muscle is going to activate, my biceps is going to activate slightly, and I'm stabilizing my shoulder in this position, therefore stabilizing my biceps fully. From here, I'm just going to come back down after a two second count at the top, coming down at a three second tempo. So all together, it's kind of one, two, three to get there, a one, two, and then another one, two, three before you finish the exercise. Now, if you find that this amount of tension is a little too easy, all you gotta do to adjust the intensity of this exercise is step a little bit further. Once you step a little bit further and you pull the arm into internal rotation, you're gonna get a little bit more tension and then you can repeat this exact same exercise. All right. We're going to move on to our next exercise that will actually target our supraspinatus tendon. So this next exercise that we'll be doing is for your supraspinatus, but we're going to modify it so that it also targets the long head of biceps tendon as well. This exercise is called the full can eccentric raise. And basically it's a modification of your conventional lateral raise exercise. So you're going to need something like a weight. We're going to use a dumbbell. I'm using 10 pounds here, but you'll choose a weight that you can lift comfortably. First thing you're going to do is you're going to hold the weight so that you're in this thumbs up position. Basically, you wanna make sure that your thumbs at the top of the motion is facing the ceiling, but you could do a full grip. You don't have to keep your thumb out and open for the whole exercise. Next, we're gonna focus on the downward or eccentric movement of this exercise so that we can better target the tendon of your biceps tendon and supraspinous tendon. So to get started, you're gonna actually raise the weight to about shoulder height. But when you're raising this weight to about shoulder height, keep in mind your hand is not directly beside you. Instead, it's gonna be about 15 to 30 degrees in front of you in what we call the scapular plane. From that top position, you're gonna take five full seconds to slowly lower your arm back to that starting position. And you're going to do anywhere between six to eight repetitions to start with, making sure that it's not re-triggering your pain. If it does trigger your pain at a certain height, then just start from a lower position. If even at this lower position, the pain is still bothering you, we can actually modify this exercise so that it doesn't bias the supraspinous tendon as much. And we'll modify it by doing what we call the hanging lateral raise. So in this exercise, you'll actually need something stable like a squat rack. You're gonna be holding onto it so that you can lean your body weight away from it. You're gonna keep your feet a little bit closer and you're gonna to lean to the side, extending the arm that's actually holding onto it. From here, you're gonna do the exact same movement where you raise the arm to above shoulder height and you're gonna take five seconds to slowly lower your arm. What this exercise does is that it biases the movement so that it targets the deltoids a little bit more than the supraspinatus, as the supraspinatus muscle is most active in the first 30 or so degrees of abduction. In the first 30 degrees of this movement, it's a lot easier since the gravity line that's being applied to the weight is not as mechanically disadvantageous to your supraspinatus tendon. So when we're actually doing this, your supraspinatus gets a little bit more of a break and then it's a lot more deltoid that's going to help out still targeting that biceps tendon. And then you progress by going to the standing position because that gravity line is being applied a little bit more directly onto the weight. That first 30 degrees where your supraspinatus is most active is going to be putting in a lot of work. 
All right, let's work on our next exercise. All right, the last exercise that we'll be doing, we'll be targeting the biceps a little bit more directly, and we'll still be working the super spinatus as well. This exercise is called the curl press. Now, this is an exercise you probably see at the gym all the time, but guess what? It's really good for your biceps pulley sling. So even once you're healed, you can kind of keep doing this as part of your fitness routine, and it'll still give you lots of great benefits for that shoulder of yours. So we're going to start by using something like a dumbbell, but you can use a kettlebell or any other weight, really. From here, you're going to start by doing a conventional biceps curl. After you complete that biceps curl, you're actually going to then shift your elbows a little bit forward so that you're kind of starting in, in the beginning of an Arnold press uh, exercise. From there, you're going to simultaneously externally rotate the shoulder and elevate the arm. Once you get to this starting position, you're just going to complete a regular shoulder press motion. Once you get to the top of that motion, you're actually going to come back down, rotate back in, and then reverse the curl. Now, some key elements when it comes to doing this exercise. I kind of ran through this really quickly, but what we want to do if you want to target the tendon is actually go through this exercise at a much slower tempo. The tempo that we actually want to target is kind of four seconds up and four seconds down, and this would really target the tendon structures of that biceps pulley. So we're going to take about one, two seconds to complete that biceps curl, and then another one, two to complete the shoulder press. Then we're going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to take one, two to complete that shoulder press going downwards, and then another two seconds to complete that elbow extension. When you're doing this exercise, pick a weight that's heavy enough that you can only do about six to eight repetitions, but light enough so that you're not really exceeding two out of 10 pain. Once again, like I mentioned in this video earlier on, if, it, if you feel pain at certain ranges, just adjust the movements so you're avoiding those ranges just because we don't want to re-aggravate your symptoms right now. There's just one more thing I want to talk about with regards to this pressing motion. Similar to the lateral raise or the full can raise that we did earlier on, we want to complete the shoulder press motion within the scapular plane. So if you take a look at me sideways, once you've completed that biceps curl movement, and as you transition into the starting position of the shoulder press, you are pressing that weight slightly in front of you. So if you actually take a look, my elbow is about 15 to 30 degrees in front of me. It's not right next to me as I'm doing the shoulder pressing motion. The only reason why we're doing this is so that we can better target the rotator cuff tendons. There's nothing wrong with having your shoulders completely next to you when you're doing your shoulder press. It is another variation of the same movement. If you want to train that, you can. But for the purpose of today's video, we're going to stick within the scapular plane. All right, so today we just finished our three exercises that we're doing for the biceps pulley sling. I did not show you these exercises in any particular order, so you can kind of switch them around depending on how you feel during these exercises. What I personally usually recommend to my patients is to start with the exercises that they find most difficult, as at this point, they will have the most amount of energy to maintain good form. And then proceed with doing the second hardest and then the easiest exercise last because you wanna keep the easiest one for when you're the most fatigued. That way you're the most likely to succeed through all the exercises that we did today. When you're doing these exercises, you shouldn't really notice any reduction of pain right away. You might feel a little bit better because your tendons will get warmed up and this ultimately tends to lead to a decreased amount of pain. This will also increase the amount of uh, stretchability that that tendon has, which will also in the short term, reduce the amount of clicking or popping that you feel in that shoulder. Realistically speaking, this will take many weeks or months for it to permanently improve because that's just how long it takes for your body to adapt to exercise. If you feel that at any point your pain is actually getting worse, I highly recommend that you see a healthcare provider near you. You really wanna make sure that the exercises that you're doing aren't actually aggravating your condition. And this is because exercises for one condition can actually make symptoms of another condition feel worse. As I mentioned earlier in this video, these exercises will be adapted or improved upon at, at about the six week mark. If you wanna see a part two to this video, let me know in the comments below. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see y'all next time.